Thanks very much. I'm, I'm really honored. I think um, I've done this now to present Alpine Pearls for around 10 years, and you're for sure the most international audience. And I've just looked at all of you, and I think you lift the age average very, very much younger. I've never spoken to younger people before, so great to have young people being interested in sustainable development. I hope I can give you some insight in, into alpine tourism, European Alps. Um, yeah, have with me a trip through the pearls of the Alps. Uh, the seat of the association is in, in Austria and the roots of the as association. Um, it has developed from European Union projects where six countries work together for sustainable mobility in tourism. It started in 2000 already. And there were initiatives quite similar to the ones Maria has been talking about, so always optimizing sustainable mobility at holiday locations and also promoting uh, the sustainable travel to and from the Alpine regions. In our regions, it's of course landlocked and it's easy to travel by train and by bus. So a strong focus was on sustainable arrival and departure. And uh, one of the focuses of these European Union projects always is what do you do after the subsidies have ceased? Normally every project just dies and lands in the drawers and nobody ever looks at it again because there is no money really to carry on working on it. And when Alpine Pearls was stopped from the point of view of European Union projects, the stakeholders founded an association without any co-funding from anybody and made uh, this non-profit association. Uh, this was 2006 and ever since then we are trying to promote our members which are at the moment 27. We call them the pearls of the Alps and that's what they really are. Shining, very valuable and they do the utmost to mitigate carbon emissions. And they do it in different ways. You see one example here. This is um, in Austria with an electric um, carriage bike. And they have a picnic at the lake. And the picnic has only zero kilometers on its back. So it's local products uh, people can consume. Um, the countries, I'll show you afterwards. What does Alpine Pearls as Association do? Uh, we are presenting the members and we um, promote the brand Alpine Pearls um, and we are building up corporations being it with, assist, uh, with um, uh, serv mobility service providers or also companies who make sports clothing or bus companies or of course tour operators. Um, the story about Alpine Pearls I've just uh, told you which for us is very important because it means that European Union projects can be sustainable, which is, I think, really rare. So we put it on the map that they can carry on living if there is a strong power behind it. Have a look at the pearls. Um, here you see the, the Alps going from, let's start, Germany um, with two very large tourism resorts then Austria with uh, Werfenweng, which is here in the middle. There's also where the head office is located and our president is located. Um, then in Slovenia, Bled, which is um, on at the lake, very beautiful. And then we have a lot of pearls in the Italian Alps and also Alto Adige in South Tyrol. Uh, two pearls in France, which make really a big difference because um, in the eastern part of the Alps, sustainable mobility is very far with a lot of train and bus service and so on. And France is a little bit the um, satellite with um, having really very remote areas, but very touristy. So they need good solutions and we work closely to improve the situation also. And uh, uh, one country's partner, Switzerland, and there you see uh, for us a really big difference here, the soft mobility, sustainable mobility, uh, is at its highest level with punctual trains, a lot of trains, uh, a lot of buses, um, and it's um, a, a gap, so to speak, in between the Swiss offers and all the rest. We learn a lot from the Swiss uh, villages and the train systems. So every village has to offer something very special. Every member community combines envi environmentally friendly soft mobility 
especially, as I said, travel to and from the village already, and then having this sustainable mobility guarantee um, in a different kind. I'll show you pictures afterwards. Um, important is that we do not forbid a car. It's not forbidden to use your car. Anytime you can use it, but we offer fun alternatives. This is so important. Of course, uh, if you say the cars are banned, then you will not attract anybody. I don't know, maybe some very strange people. But we only say, um, if you want to let your car for a day or two or a fortnight for a total holiday, we have a good alternative, which doesn't cost you more, gives you pleasure, security, comfort, and especially for families with kids, it's secure, nothing happens, and so on. Um, you don't, you are not in the, in the car congestion, I mean, if you're traveling, I don't know how good you know the Alps, and you go um, the starting of the holiday season from Munich area to the Alps, you might be in the congestion for about, I don't know, 10 hours, 12 hours with your kids in the back. So you might next time take a train and um, use alternatives. Um, and especially people who are traveling a lot with the car during the year, they say at least for a holiday, let's try something else, go to the Alps, just do hiking, cycling, and enjoy nature. So the pearls, our members stay for, stand for sustainability, climate protection, and also quality in tourism. So it is not a cheap holiday off for something, it's quality. It can be cheap, it can be youth hostel, but it must be good quality, and it can also be a good range um, for the um, uh, accommodation. The, the basis uh, of the cooperation is a catalog of criteria and every pearl has to obey to it and um, as basic requirements. Then there is the large point mobility for overnight guests, for daily visitors, also for inhabitants. And there is fun mobility and the, you will see at the pictures what we mean by fun mobility. Mostly it's of course in the Alps hiking, cycling, but it's a lot also coming now electric mobility with segways, e-bikes, pedelecs, and so on. Um, in our catalog of criteria, there's also other areas because mobility only is not a holiday. I mean, it's good, it's nice to go there in a sustainable way, but that's not the holiday. The holiday you take because there is good things to eat. There's the wine, there is the fruit, there is the uh, excellent uh, rural farm products. There is an environment, maybe there is a national park or a nature park clear, uh, nearby. Uh, there's a high quality of life. Um, maybe it's quieter than at home, uh, less noise, less smoke, and so on. And of course, the regional products and the regional people <laughs> you have to enjoy. Maybe our accent, for example, is also different, and it's interesting to hear this, to have um, an encounter of this Alpine culture once in a lifetime, or hopefully once in a year. Um, we, as an association, have a um, 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 plan of uh, measures every year. Um, we have seen that just, you know, e e existing and uh, doing uh, without a lot of planning, our members don't, do not like. So we are, have a very strict plan and we have to strictly stick to it. And we do a lot of communication work, of course, website, Facebook, and so on, um, newsletters. Um, we build up a network of hotels which is called Alpine Pearls Hosts, and these hosts focus on soft mobility. And they really cater for this very special guest who is prone to uh, let the car for a while. We do product development, soft mobility holiday offers. I think, Maria, you know very well what I'm talking about, just creating something new for a guest, be innovative every year, every season, winter, summer, of course. Um, then we made ad make advertisement campaign for special target groups. Our target groups are quite clear, so to speak. It's the one who likes to take the train, train uh, travelers, and uh, one small but growing and very, very much growing group um, is the people, households in big cities who do not have a car anymore. And they don't have a car because they cannot uh, afford a car, but they don't have a car because they don't like one. There's no parking, there is uh, too much time driving around looking for a parking space, and they just don't have a car anymore. They might use car sharing, they might use public transport, they might walk more than before, and we see a growing trend. I don't know if you know the numbers. Even here in Berlin, I think 40% of all households do not have a car anymore. Um, with young people, it's a trend that they don't even make a driver's license anymore. 
So in, when I was younger, maybe 20, 25 years ago, there was no question if you make a driver's license or no. I mean, it would have been really a shame if you don't have a driver's license or impossible. Today, in the bigger cities, it's a trend to also prove I can do without a driver's license. I can do without a car. It's, um, the, the mobile society with, with all its gadgets, this is much more important than owning this car. This is really a shift. Um, when I look at the bigger cities also in Austria, um, when you make your final um, exam, in earlier times, maybe if you have well-to-do parents, they would have given you a car. Today, no. <laughs> it's not so much a matter anymore. But this is only in, rural, uh, in, in urban areas, not, of course, in rural areas. We also, of course, rely much on cars there. And what we also do as, a, as an association, having this Austrian uh, roots, we are now on the way on internationalizing. We are found, find founding an European cooperation group, which has also the official laws of the European Union, which is very important for us to be well known as a European brand and not so much Austrian.